So let's cover the mount combat powers that you should be using for maximum damage. There are quite a lot of different mount combat powers, each of them having their own unique effects and benefits, but some are definitely better than others. So let's quickly go through them so you can know which ones you wanna be picking up. Now these combat powers come from mounts. So when you go and obtain a mount, like we have a bunch in our inventory right here, can right click it and inspect and you can see the mount will give you like an equip power we're not going to be talking about those today you have the combat power then and each mount will have like a unique one if they are legendary quality or higher anything that's purple or lower will generally either have tunnel vision or explosive equalizer or rejuvenating favor. There are a few unique uh, newer event mounts that you might find on like blue or purple that do have some unique powers, but as of yet, there still hasn't been any, I believe, that are that useful. So the main place you will get unique powers and the best ones is from legendary and mythic mounts. Some of them will have duplicate variants. For example, this Tyrannosaur, it's a commander version, has like the Tyrannosaurus Rexum, and it has the same effect as let's say the King of Spines, same Tyrannosaurus Rexum. And those effects will not like stack on top of each other. So let's say you can increase the damage the target takes, well, you can only benefit from one of these. There are some exceptions. Just be aware that your mount combat power has a 60 second cooldown and its effectiveness will vary. So for example, this is at its maximum benefit, the bat swarm. That is when you have 100% mount bolster, which is when you have 10 mythic mounts and when that bat swarm, the, the swarm mount, is on mythic rarity. So let's move over to DPS. What are the best mount combat powers a damage dealer should be using in Neverwinter? And we'll start with within boss fights, single target damage. Well, the best ones out there right now are these four. You have your legendary giant toad, which has its giant toad tongue lash, which can get up to 3000 magnitude. That is more magnitude than most DPS players, pretty much I believe all DPS players have on like their hard hitting daily powers. So it can deal an absolute ton of damage. And it's not the only one like that. Also be warned that the cast time of this is a bit longer than other ones and it deals magical based damage. So the higher you have of your magical boost here, that mainly just comes from intelligence ability score, the more damage it will deal. So whichever one you have higher here, you wanna take amount that deals that actual damage. And so then you have another option, which is the golden warhorse. It's like an event mount and it has golden touch, which also 3000 magnitude. It's also magical damage and yeah, same magnitude. So same amount of damage. I just find the cast time is a bit nicer than the toad. And then you have other mounts like the purple ones, which give tunnel vision. And when you get that to mythic with 100% bolster, it's also 3000 magnitude. It also deals magical damage, but I think it has maybe a slightly worse cast animation or cast time than the golden warhorse but that can just be down to preference i'm not sure how you guys could test that yourself other than going to the previous server which i would recommend but it's not going to be such a big deal and the cheapest option can usually be getting a giant toad and upgrading it otherwise getting something with tunnel vision and upgrading it you will have to have it on mythic in order to give the 3000 and lastly there is the big beast hand and you can add up its magnitude when you use it against a boss and it'll also be 3000. And the benefit from this is it's based off physical damage. The other three, Tunnel Vision, Golden Touch and your, your Giant Toad are all magical. So that's why physical damage dealers would ideally have the big, big Bee's hand. It's also come straight on Mythic and it's account wide. So it does have that going for it. It does have additional effects there, but generally you'll only use it in boss fights. All these three you'll use on boss fights. Then for like an AOE fight, you'll have mount powers like the legendary giant carpet, the vortex. You pull all the enemies together, grouping them up, allowing you to deal a lot more damage against them because you might your area of effect powers might be a bit limited so that you can't hit 
enemies that are in such a wide area and grouping them up can be such a massive benefit and i would recommend it as one of the top combat powers to use in aoe especially at the moment and then you also have alternative which is like the vortex from the omen of despair and there's also like the dark omen warhorse as well i believe something along those lines but the legendary variant it it's a little bit different has a little bit less magnitude as well and then you have like the celestial wings with divine intervention it has like a massive cone area and it's a thousand magnitude and then you have like the arcane whirlwind which does a pretty decent amount of damage as well it just has the kind of negative effect of pushing enemies if you don't end up killing them with it so those are like the best combat powers in my opinion for a dps absolutely your priority as a dps player is to get one of these that's going to have the 3000 magnitude that is not something you want to miss out on it's such a massive bonus to your damage in like artifact calls when you're getting towards end game content so yeah and usually a dps player unless you're playing some hybrid buff dps you would generally stick with just these personal damage combat powers and so let's move into what should tanks and healers be using well right now the meta for endgame is to stack as much benefits to boost the, your dps in the group the three damage dealers you want to make them as powerful as possible so you can get through the content as quickly as possible right now outside of like tower of the mad mage or your zariel those trials you do not need to stack any additional survivability for your teammates to survive so you can afford to run with powers like from the t-rex that increase the damage taken by said target so your boss and you would use these on an artifact call so all of the ones available i believe are all of these ones right here like we start with the eclipse lion with eclipse armament you can increase the damage the target takes along with reducing the damage they deal so that's really good then it's a two in one combo combat power you can use it as damage mitigation support as well as providing damage support to your team swarm has the same effect the bat swarm will have the added effect of slowing your target which usually doesn't do anything against bosses and then you have like your t-rexes as i mentioned again you can only use like one t-rex they don't stack with each other so just be aware of that and they just straight up increase the damage the target takes then there's the pegasus you have first the noble pegasus with the magnificent inspiration first of all it will do a bunch of damage it's not 3000 magnitude i'll tell you that it's only like 1000 and then if you uh, don't crit it's like 1800 it's a bit stupid anyway your allies gain a bunch of forte but most importantly the dps in your party will gain 15 percent extra damage and the legendary variant has the exact same effect and the benefit is that they both stack with each other so you can gain a 30 percent damage buff from using both of these of course yeah of course different players will have to cast those you can only use one combat power obviously then you have the balloons which has this magnificent balloons bombardment you basically increase the damage it takes of that target by 7.5 percent and the legendary variant has the same effect and then you have like your cauldron you will also have a legendary variant of this which just increase your allies accuracy and combat advantage usually everybody wants to have maximum combat advantage so they won't gain any benefit from that most people don't have 90 percent accuracy so this can be useful to get to 90 percent accuracy so we'll look at the math just in a sec but lastly we have the salamanders and this if you read through the entire thing it's mainly just a damage mitigation effect like and also slowing your enemy but otherwise it will reduce deflect chance of the enemy so that on average will give you a bit higher damage by reducing the chance that they will deflect your allies attacks but it's not that a big deal and we'll look at the math in just a sec so ultimately what we end up with with regards to damage support for your teammates is this table and you can see i've ranked each of those mounts from one to eight again we have both the pegasus on like four and five it doesn't matter which because it's the same benefit and they do very nicely stack with each other so in most groups you will be running with an eclipse line and a swarm for like your dungeons 
your healer will have one of them and your tank would have one of them that's ideal because they also have the damage mitigation with their effects and then you would have the king of spines or one of the t-rexes which just has that 15 percent increased damage taken by the target and then i would recommend the Pegasus. You could prioritize the Pegasus, the Pegasi, a little bit higher if you wanted, let's say, the mitigation buff for, let's say, your tanks and the healer buff for your healer if you needed that. So there might be some situations where you would prioritize a Pegasus over a T Rex. But again, they all give about a 15% damage increase. Just keep in mind the Pegasus or the Pegasi give a 15% damage buff, whereas the Eclipse Worm and the T Rexes give a 15% debuff. So they'll stack separately and then multiply afterwards. And so in sixth place, it's like the Balloons, and then seventh place is the Cauldron. Just keep in mind of the Cauldron, it'll have zero benefit if you have 90% accuracy and combat advantage and ideally on a min max build you want to have 90% combat advantage anyway so you'll gain no benefit from that but if you were at just 75% accuracy and gain 15% from the cauldron that would add up to about a 7.5% damage boost not too bad and then lastly is the salamander I have him in red because he'll give no benefit to you if you have 90% accuracy the reason is because if you have 90% accuracy then the enemy deflecting does no benefit. It doesn't matter to you. It So it would end up in a 0% damage gain. If you're at like 60% accuracy, then it's like a 4% damage gain. So the higher accuracy you have, the worse overall the salamander is for damage support. And so those are all of those ranked. And hopefully that helps you guys. We can have a quick look at the math of like the salamander and I can show you what I mean. There you go, about 4% because of reducing the enemy's deflect chance. And that's at 60% accuracy. And that's the cauldron then going from 75 up to 90% with that total damage. So again, a quick TLDR. You want to have as a DPS player, one of these three if you're a magic dealer, like this epic giant toad is just a standby. There's many mounts with tunnel vision. And then for physical damage dealers, you want to have the big B's hand. And then for AOE, you want to have like one of these. Depends on the situation. I would highly recommend like the vortex from the carpet or from the omen of despair or the legendary variant. And then for damage support, just to increase the benefit of your teammates, you want to be having, yeah, one of these, one of these four ideally, like Eclipse, Swarm, a T-Rex, or a Pegasus. You might, you might be thinking that, why doesn't everybody just go damage support? Well, missing out on freaking 3000 magnitude is not going to be worth just increasing your other teammates effectiveness by 15%, not by a long shot, I'll tell you that much. So again, that's the table and hopefully it's somewhat insightful. Again, this will help you when you're trying to create a group for master content for end game, especially for those trials. Special thank you to all of these channel members. I will see you guys around. Goodbye for now.